<laughs> so together there, I can see it moving around. Hopefully he's there ready. We are, David. He's outside We're already. Ready. Yeah, uh, good. Uh, you know, uh, the big question is, um, people look at AT&T and they wonder whether, in fact, the company created value from this long-term association exclusively that it's had until now with AT&T. When you tell your shareholders, uh, how are you going to ultimately create shareholder value from this new relationship with, with uh, Apple and the iPhone? Yeah, David, that's really not a question for us in any way. If we look at our smartphone portfolio that we have today, we generate about $100 roughly per customer, and uh, it's a very profitable customer for us. So we have spent the last year really accelerating our smartphone base, and we think by adding the iPhone 4 in 2011, we're going to see that jump dramatically, which will deliver significant value to our shareholders. And now, there's no exclusivity period here, I notice. In other words, could Sprint also come into the market with, uh, with potentially an iPhone in the not-too-distant future as well? Well, our exclusivity is around our technology. You know, we're going to get a huge uh, movement of customers onto the network because of the quality of our network. And as we announced at CES last week, we are investing in our backbone. We're investing in 4G LTE. So we see our exclusivity is by staying on the leading edge of technology and delivering a better experience for customers. You know, you mentioned LTE, of course, and many people I speak to expect that will be the true game changer here. What I wonder is, if I'm walking into a store in a few months and there's an Android phone that I can run on your LTE network, and there's an iPhone there, why aren't I gonna go with the Android that's gonna offer me such faster speeds given an iPhone for the 4G network's not gonna be available for quite some time? Well, it depends on the experience the customer's looking for. And we all know the iconic device in the marketplace over the last several years has been the iPhone. All those apps are gonna work better on the most reliable network. Customers gonna, are gonna love that. Over time, LTE will evolve with the applications and we've got a great array of those to start out with, but this is a tremendous addition to our portfolio and we are really excited to have Apple as a partner. Lowell, if I uh, am an AT&T customer, I'm under contract right now, I have an iPhone. I wanna walk into a Verizon store, I wanna break my contract with AT&T and I'm willing to move my number over to Verizon. Will you help subsidize the losses that I may have to take as an AT&T customer if I want to be your customer? Well, first of all, David, that's great news. Give me a call. I'll be sure to bring you over right away. But look, we think the incentive for customers is the network. And that's what we have heard from customers over the last four years. So we don't think there's a need for an incentive. By the way, I'm not going to put any barriers in front of customers that want to come, uh, but we're not going to go out and incent them to come. They'll come on their own. And you have no data cap on your iPhone plan, correct? Or I should say T, uh, T has a data cap and you do not. Is that right? Well, we don't have an iPhone plan today, so we'll, uh, we'll announce that just as we get uh, to launching. But our smartphone portfolio in general today, we do have unlimited options for customers, yes. And, you know, and I wonder, though, uh, what about the iPad? Uh, and when I say that again, I'm coming back to LTE, which so many people are talking yeah. about as a transformational technology. At what point yeah. is there going to be a, an iPad? which I would argue perhaps might be a lot more uh, a bigger product for 4G um, that you conceivably will be offering. Well, that, that's, uh, that's probably a good argument, uh, David. I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't debate that at all. So here's, I think, the facts. Right now, the um, LTE chipsets are a little bit bigger. They take a little bit more power. So having them on tablets and USBs is sort of the sweet spot. And as you saw at CES last week, we've announced that over the first half of the year, we'll bring more smartphones out and that'll evolve. And I think over time, it's logical that, uh, that Apple and Verizon will be bringing these products to market. We're just not ready to announce anything today. Yeah, Lowell, let's just uh, switch gears for one quick second. This is Gary. Um, I I another issue related to Verizon is the amount of money you spent on Fios and how much you'll continue to spend on Fios. Can you give us an right. update in terms of where that stands, uh, in terms of uh, trying to figure out uh, cash flow with the company? Yeah, well, we pass about 15 million homes today, and we have said that over time we're going to get to 18 million to fulfill all of our uh, franchise agreements, and we're going to do that. And I think, Gary, the, the, the thing that gets me excited just moving into this new uh, role as the chief operating officer is if you look at the assets we have between the cloud, between our 100 gigabyte capable backbone and between Fios into the home, and you look at what's coming. CES was a great way to talk about that last week. All of the video, all of the data, having that 
footprint and that capability in Fios gives us the ability to do all the HD, all the 3D that you want. We are really the only carrier out there that is future proof on the technology. So I, I feel very good about Fios and you know over time we may look at even taking it uh, broadly if we can show shareholder value. Now you have not in the past bundled Fios with wireless. Is that something that you may consider uh, down the road? Absolutely, and I think our FlexView product that we, we launched just in fourth quarter is just the beginning of that. And I think the issue's been, uh, with, without LTE, the video experience on 3G, while it was certainly better than anything we've had before, I think as David said, it really is the game changer. You can do high definition video across the country. You can play games in real time because of the latency of LTE. That changes the equation, which is what brings all those assets that Verizon has together and, and we'll use them effectively in the market. Final question though, will it actually take up your average revenue per user for data? Uh, I do believe it will, absolutely. If you look at back to the wireless side, that $100 customer, and our focus now is to go find even more applications that customers will want, so they use the uh, use the the, uh, the service. And LTE, the cost structure of LTE is so much more efficient than 3G. We do believe it's going to expand our margins. Mr. McAdams, uh, appreciate your time. Thanks for standing out there in the cold. Glad it's not snowing today. All right, David. All right. Have not a great one. Yeah, yet. not so far. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Not right. so far. President of Verizon, of course, and expected to take over from CEO Ivan Seinberg at some point this year, Gary. And real interesting answer in terms of the uh, trying to get some of the AT&T customers over. I mean, you've walked in, you've gone into a Verizon store, an AT&T store. You know that it's a there's a bargaining that goes on. There is definitely a negotiation. I believe that he sincerely thinks right now they won't have to subsidize. But if you're an AT&T customer and you're in a contract right now and you want to move over, I mean, do you really think, David, that they're not going to have to look no. at finding a way to get you over? You know, it depends on quality. I mean, Verizon was criticized for quite some time for spending so much money on their network, but ultimately they have benefited uh, from that. All right, you know what? When we come back, of course, we want to resume our strategy session. In